we still can deter North Korea. Even if they got a nuclear weapon, it's not the end of the world. Okay? There are nine nations with nuclear weapons, and we haven't had a nuclear war. Okay? Right now, China has nuclear weapons, and Russia has nuclear weapons. They're not exactly our friends. Pakistan. What stops them from attacking us? The fact that we can freaking attack them back. Here's the thing, and, 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 and both Leo and, and, uh, and Jim have talked a lot about the tax cuts being terrible. They are absolutely terrible. Opposed to tax cuts per se. Mm-hmm. The problem is we're already in a deficit. We're already in a but deficit. Isn't a spending problem, though, Amy. No, not no? necessarily. Because oh, here's the thing. So. Well, most of the federal budget, um, a, a quarter of it is military spending, and I actually think we we ought to increase military spending but, taxes, but and we're going to get more money. It doesn't make sense. You say it's, it's not a spending issue, but during the Obama administration, the debt went up by over nine trillion dollars. During the Obama administration, the deficit went up because the economy tanked right as he went into office. See, the deficit is a function of revenue, mm-hmm. and it's a function of spending. But our revenue spending, went up those years, though. Revenue did not go up. It did go up. No, it did not. Look, revenue went down. How, how can revenue go up? If the economy tanks, if revenue is a function of the economy. If you look at the charts, spending remained the same. Revenue went down because you had all these unemployed people. If you're unemployed, you're not paying taxes. So that's why the deficit increased year after year after year. And it's actually under the Obama administration, as the, as the economy recovered, our deficit was actually getting smaller and smaller until when? Until now. When we cut taxes, now well, our deficit, deficit gets bigger. I think I- support building a wall to slow illegal immigration no, on I the southern it, border. No, I think it's absolutely stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a a ninth century uh, solution to a twenty first century problem. So you vote no on any funding of that. I, I would vote no on any funding, yeah, for that, in, 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 unless it came in um, some sort of, of package where uh, we got uh, DACA recipients to be uh, full citizens. Health care, would you, would you also no, bring back the individual mandate to help bring prices down? Answer is yes. For example, so you're I, not for single payer. I, you know, for single payer, I believe that if we if we were to start a health care system from scratch, that would be the way to go. But that's not the world we live in. It's just not realistic right now. And so we need to move in that direction, but we need to move in it in an incremental way, a way that uh, we as Americans do with every major piece of legislation. Do you? If you want to move back into your, you, you, we'll start your two minutes on the health care. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, if we were to structure a, re- a system of health care from scratch, zap ourselves back 40 or 50 years, I think single payer would probably be the way to go. There's other countries that have done it, and it's very efficient. It's fair. Well, I think uh, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, um, was a decent piece of legislation. I th- The attitude that we need to throw away the Iran deal. Uh, the Iran deal is, is keeping Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. It's not permanent, but it, 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 it has, it's the best deal that we could have made um, at that time. And I can talk extensively about that because uh, I taught weapons of mass destruction at the U.S. Naval Academy. I was in a, um, a program for emerging leaders coming out of the National Defense uh, University, all on weapons of mass destruction at the top secret level, at the secret level. So, I mean, I think that these are the things I know about. Yeah, now that Trump has just pulled out of the Iranian deal, uh, do you think that's going to be a destabilizing event? How bad can things get in the Middle East? (laughs) We'll see what the Iranians do. Uh, And this is a foreign policy question about the president pulling out of the Iran deal. Here's... The Iran deal is very complex, and um, but here's what I'll tell you. I, I was uh, I taught weapons of mass destruction at the U.S. Navy. Okay, 
I was in a three-year program called the Program for Emerging Leaders at the National Defense University at the secret level. I know a little bit about nuclear weapons, right? And I've studied the Iran deal. Uh, it's, it was not a bad deal at all. of Americans and the majority of gun owners already think we ought to do. Why hasn't that been done yesterday? And I'm talking about things like universal background checks. I'm talking about things like banning bump stocks. I'm talking about things like uh, uh, having reasonable restrictions for folks who are uh, mentally ill. Assault weapons ban? You know, with the assault weapons, um, I think that ought to be on the table. I don't understand why we need <laughs> AR-15. Yeah. It's an offensive weapon, not a defensive. Yeah. Weapon. <laughs> I, you know, it's this is this is such a hard debate because you get into this whole what is an assault weapon and what isn't and all that stuff. I've been to war. My fundamental belief is that weapons of war should not be here in the United States. But, but doctors say at 20 weeks a child feels pain in the womb. I, I, I don't have anything to go at you against that. Her spouse and her doctor. I, I, I am believe I'm believe that we should protect the woman's right to choose. It is her choice. It's her choice. It's not yours. It's hers. Well, I think that, but you see, the unborn child doesn't have a voice, and I think people should stand up for the unborn child. Well, I mean, I, I, I disagree with you. I think it's... Well, and Kentucky is obviously still a red state, uh, still has two Republican senators, and, mm -hmm. and when someone hears that you're a Democrat from Kentucky, I think that they would, you know, maybe question whether you, whether that means you're kind of more to the right. But if you look at your platform, if you look at the things that you support, um, that doesn't seem to be the case. You believe in climate change. You support, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Abortion, <laughs> the public option, and health care. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, and, and I don't think these are, are, are really radical things. I think these are, these are, are normal things that a lot of people um, agree with. They are more conservative than the already conservative Robert Supreme Court, which is the law of this land, okay, then maybe they shouldn't vote for me. Okay, that, that's just, I'm not gonna change. Apparently they can't attack me with being uh, friends with Nancy Pelosi because she recruited somebody else. So, would, you, would you vote for her as speaker? You know, I think we ought to look at who's, who's up. Who's up in the bus? And Paul Ryan looks like the, the biggest other choice. You know, I think, well, certainly against Paul Ryan, of course. I like what you had to say about being progressive voices in the in the party. I think that's, well, yeah, that's really important. To me, it's, it's, it's about who's the messenger for this progressive... Mm -hmm. Who's the best messenger? Right. Sure. I mean, I can go to Congress and I can be a voice for all of these issues. Mm -hmm. and, and I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any Republican on sure. every guns, national security, um, environment, so you name it, bring it. And I've got the credibility to do that. And I think that's what... The doing. Republicans really been attacking anybody in the party that's progressive. Like Keith Ellison recently, you know, and, I think it's now, important now that... they can't attack me with being uh, friends with Nancy Pelosi because she was <laughs> would, you, would you vote for her as speaker? You know, I think we ought to look at who's, who's, up, who's up in the bus. And Paul Ryan looks like the, the, the biggest other choice. You know, I think, well, certainly against Paul Ryan, of course. Uh, yes, uh, Amy, you've said, uh, let's see who's running in response to who you would vote to lead as uh, Speaker of the House. Uh, but if you are elected in the Democrat caucus, votes internally for Nancy Pelosi. Will you commit to the people of the 6th District to vote for Pelosi on the final ballot on the House to replace uh, Paul Ryan as Speaker? Your question is, would I vote for Pelosi over Paul Ryan? Yeah, if you win, who would, would, well, Ryan's out. But if you win and Democrats get control of the uh, the of, of the House of Representatives, yeah. would you vote for Nancy Pelosi to be the Speaker? I think it's the question. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I'm going to say what I've said before. Is I'm going to see who's running in, in that uh, race, and, to, and I'm going to vote for the best person. 
But if it were Nancy Pelosi, if, if she were the preferred, the, the likely winner, would you go along with that, or would you would, would you look at other candidates? I would look at all the candidates. People? I would look at all the candidates, and I would I would make sure that I'm voting for the right uh, person. I mean, I I think that. Uh, the Democratic Party, there's a lot of people that are very concerned that the Democratic Party is, is uh, perceived to be led by San Francisco and New York. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we ought to, well, we ought to look that. at it. The, the majority of minority leaders. Well, that's, that's exactly coast. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and Chuck Schumer in the, in the Senate side and Nancy Pelosi on the House side. And, you know, I just think if we're talking about a new generation of leaders, we ought to look at it. it everybody ought to be on the table and let's see who's running. I'd like to see. When you're going to have your first vote in Congress. It's going to be either for Scalise or McCarthy or Pelosi. You only get two choices. It's binary. So can you just please tell us who you're going to vote for? Well, I just disagree with you. I mean, there's there's other people. Every single time we have a, 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 a vote for Speaker of the House, it's more than just, you know, two. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to vote for the best qualified person and the, and the person that I think, uh, you know, should be Speaker. Let me ask you a question. What, what would you look for? What's the, what, do you, what lesson do you draw from that that you think that the, the you know, trip should be listening to? We're, we're seeing that the, 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 the well-funded sort of um, having the establishment backing doesn't really help you. In fact, you know, um, people are sort of tired of that. They don't trust the Democratic National Party. You know, many, many in Democrats in Kentucky don't. Um, in a way that is neutral because I felt like there were so much lies, particularly by one side, that it just got to the point where the candidate we had um, on the Republican side, what he was saying, what he stood for, was so against everything that I had ever stood for as a military officer, okay? I was not only teaching them US government, but I was also teaching them leadership, why character matters, why integrity matters. And then, of course, the results of the election, we have a new commander-in-chief. And that morning I woke up like somebody had sucker punched me. I mean, I felt like, what has just happened to my country? The only thing I can describe, the, the only feeling I can describe that's any close to it was the feeling I had after 9-11. What just happened? Where are we going from here? And... It was that just sinking feeling of sadness, and I didn't know what to do. I took a step back um, within 48 hours of that election, and I, I basically decided at that point, I gotta do something, and I gotta do something big. I've always been the kind of person that steps up to the plate. I've always been the kind of person that serves, that wants to serve our country, and I felt like right now, or at that point, I got I to gotta go into politics. I can't stand the lies. I can't stand uh, the politicians who are just clearly, uh, in my opinion, doing what was best for their political party and not what was best for the country. So it was the election of 2016 that, that spurred this interest in, in me. But I didn't know when. I was going to do this. I have three small kids, and I didn't really know where. I'm from Kentucky. I'm really sad. The 2016 elections, with who we elected, the, the morning after, I woke up literally with a hole in my heart. I woke up and I thought, what, what has just happened to the country I love? Where are we going? Where are our leaders? Where are our leaders? And the only feeling I can equate to that was the feeling I had on 9-11 of what do we do now? Within 48 hours of that election, I realized I think I want to know. I know what I want to do with this second part, this next part of my life. I dedicated the first part to, to public service, to service the country. I think we need better leaders in public service, and so that's when I decided I'm going to run. Now the when, the when, and the where came a little bit later. Over the next few months, um, when we started to realize that the Republicans were actually going to try to push through some of these things that they had talked about, um, like the repeal and replace plan, which I felt was completely politically motivated um, and deeply affects a state like Kentucky, 
that had been benefiting from a, a, sle a flawed Affordable Care Act, but something that was moving us in the right direction. Kentucky was benefiting from it. And I felt like all the politicians were basically lying to people, saying, hey, we've got something better, and they didn't. And it was in the spring, it was right around this time last year, when I said, no, I gotta run now. We gotta do this now. My husband, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> year mark and Eric was reaching the 20 year mark in the United States Navy and we wanted to move back home. Kentucky. Yeah I mean I, I think look uh, the election of 2016 and Donald Trump whether you like him or not he, he changed a lot of us okay it changed me. Um, I for, for somebody who has served her country in the military um, it, my response to that was not oh hell no you know it was oh hell no. I am, I, 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 I am not, I am not accepting of this. I'm not accepting, not in, not in America. I woke up the next morning with a hole in my heart, all right, for where our country was going, for who we had elected as our commander in chief. And I'm watching the 2016 elections unfold. And I'm scared for my country and disappointed. The morning after the election, I woke up and I thought somebody had sucker punched me. I was embarrassed for my country in a way that I could not describe. And it wasn't who we elected as much as the candidates themselves and the actual run up for the election, what had happened to our country. Everything from the fake news, to how people talked, for who we had elected as our commander in chief. And it wasn't who we elected as much as the candidates themselves and the actual run up for the election. What the elections of 2016 um, <laughs> galvanized a lot of us, okay? Um, I woke up the next morning with a hole in my heart, all right, for where our country was going for who we had elected as our commander-in-chief. Yep. Okay? Um, for, for me, who was, uh, was at the time a, a woman in, in our military, my response to that was not just a, oh no. It was a, oh hell no. <laughs> connect, K-Y-N-E-C-T, connect. And so now Kentuckians are like, wow, I hate the Affordable Care Act, but I love Connects. <laughs> and now they're starting to realize, dude, those are the same thing. Right now? And, and that's really the reality now. and foster, okay? And I believe in those values because I myself have been a victim of discrimination in my life, right? As a woman in the Marine Corps, as a woman in the military, there were things that were not open to me at certain times. And we had to fight for them. We had to fight for what was right, okay? And we still need to continue to do that with the LGBT community, all right? We still need to fight for these types of things because discrimination is wrong. All right. And this is the right thing to do. But if there's a criticism of run, coming here and just running for office, I mean, you're from northern Kentucky. Somebody might say, well, why don't you go up there and run for office? Okay. Why this district? Why this yeah. part of Kentucky? And why run for office right after you move here instead of maybe waiting a couple years? Sure. Well, you know, why here? Um, 
first of all, I, I live right now in Scott County, and it's only 60 miles from where I was raised. My um, husband uh, got a wonderful business opportunity in the Georgetown area, and um, that's the place we ended up uh, you know, going and residing. So why would you not want to move? I've got small children. Um, Lexington is a college town. It's, uh, it's a great town for kids. Um, so this is definitely where we wanted to go. And look, I was an independent for many years. We cannot deny it. As Democrats, uh, for, for me, um, the Democratic Party did just totally drop the ball. We focused way too much on the urban areas. Um, the leadership of our, of our party, I'll be honest with you, I'm not aligned with the Democratic national leadership. They don't know me. I've never met them. Um, I, they are San Francisco and New York City, and, and for, for those of us in the middle, there's a lot of feeling left behind. I'll be honest with you, I'm not aligned with the Democratic National Leadership. They don't know me, I've never met them.